Welcome everybody in the news from Cannes. We are live and I'm here with Lisa Uschneider, CEO of IS. Hey Lisa, great to see you. Hi Rob, great to see you too. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for being here. So much fun, beautiful day. How's Cannes going for you so far? I love Cannes. I've lo I'm probably the same as you. I've lost track of how many Cannes I've been to, but I just love it in terms of uh, it's like a big reunion with all of our digital industry friends, spending time with major brands, platforms, doing fireside chats like this, uh, having a really solid can so far. Good, good, good. Yeah, I think the energy is really good. The weather is perfect. Not too hot. It's really not too hot. Really perfect. So, so we're lucky. So, so what's going on in IAS? What are some of the big initiatives you're working on right now? Like what rises to the top? Yeah, so at IES, and as you know, we're a leading global measurement and optimization company. We work with some of the major Fortune 500 brands like Coke, Nestle, Verizon, and ensuring that major brands, when they're running digital advertising, wherever they're running it, it's adjacent to brand safe and suitable content. Yep. We are very focused on leveraging AI, science is in the name of IES, to ensure brands are running in suitable environments, especially in the live feeds of social platforms. So really busy right now. Super focused. And thanks for being a partner of ours. Uh, and we oh, really we love our relationship uh, and so excited. So what's going on specifically when you think about the social platforms and how to help within their brand safety and suitability to help your clients? Yeah, so I don't know if you remember a few years ago when the brands were applying a lot of pressure on the social platforms to open up their live feeds to independent verification companies like IES so that we could go in and verify that uh, where the any violent content, inappropriate content, hate speech, adult, and ensure that the brands didn't run adjacent to those environments. We built a multimedia classification technology. It's called Total Media Quality. We launched it first on TikTok early last year. And now the global scale, global adoption is through the roof. We're running in over 60 markets, over 30 languages on TikTok. We're running the tech in YouTube, Meta, uh, X. And over the last three weeks, we announced we're going to launch it on Reddit. Pinterest and Snap. I was just going to ask you. I just, I heard, I just saw you add a new platform. So you beat me to the punch. Congratulations. We're adding the new platforms. Yeah, new platforms. Good for you. Good for you. So you're, you're basically covering them all now. Um, it's good for you. Uh, and 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 so obviously, when we think about hot topics. 2024 is the year of the election. Uh, we've got a big one, but there's been lots of them everywhere. When you think about the concept of mis and disinformation specifically around election time. So how are you thinking about the concept of mis and disinformation specifically in this crazy big election year we have? So sure, um, now that our multimedia classification technology is running in the live feeds of the social platforms and we're able to classify video, image, audio, text, real time, frame by frame, so every single second of a 30 second TikTok video, identifying all of the inappropriate content that could be running, whether it's related to hate speech or adult, we've taken that technology and we've now leveraged it to detect misinformation. It has been the number one request from the brands to get this tech live in the social platforms. So we pulled it from the back half of 2024 roadmap into the first half. Uh, we launched it in April, both with TikTok and with Meta. Uh, and the way it works, it's AI technology identifying misinformation, but we also, because there are so many nuances with the misinformation, we have a human layer below that. So we work with a third party, a company named GDI, they're based in the UK, and it's that combination of the tech flagging it, and then if necessary, humans confirm yes, this is misinformation, and we feed it back into the model. Let's say, and this is not a political statement, there's a, a live interview happening with Putin. He's speaking fluent Russian. Yeah. Below, the, and below the frame of Putin is a banner that sta states Putin supports Biden's position on whatever the situation yeah. is. Yep. Our technology can classify real time, translate what Putin is saying, marry it up, classify the text that's running below Putin and say, 
this is not true, this is not accurate, this is not what Putin is saying, and flags it as misinformation. Super cool. It is very cool. Very and in cool. addition to misinformation, we also accelerated the launch of deep fake detection. So coming off the heels of the launch of misinformation, we've also launched deep fake detection. No one's cracked that code either where our technology, we're first focused on face swapping. So think of face swapping, identifying, let's say it's Biden's voice in an interview, but a different face, it's not Biden. The technology can identify this is not uh, Biden and it's uh, generated AI content. Wow, wow, okay. So just as cutting edge on creating the fakes is finding them. It's yeah. using AI to identify AI generated content that's not accurate. Always staying a step ahead. Good for you. Good for you. Well, Lisa, this was really great. We learned a lot. Thanks Thank so much you for so doing much this. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, Thank yeah. you. You're welcome.